how to install Windows 11 ARM on an Apple Silicon hardware, in my case a MacBook, but could be any Mac. So first of all, you need to go directly to the Windows Insider program. This is like a preview for developer that allow you to download an actual image of the Windows operating system. As you can see, we need first of all to subscribe to the program, so we need just to create a Microsoft account and after this we will be able to jump to the Windows Insider preview download. In this window we can see all the available images for our operating system. In my case I would like the Windows 11 ARM preview version. So from this window we will be able to choose the Canary developer or beta build. Let me go for the Canary. The Canary is uh, a version of the operating system that is already ready for uh, production but need just uh, further, uh, further testing. Okay, we can. Sh second step is to choose actually the language English United States, that is the default, and uh, after this we will be able actually to download the file. Okay. Cool, this is the latest build available 25905 at the moment of recording this video. As you can see, the download process is already started and is, the file is pretty big, nearly 10 GB of data. The amount of time depends by the speed of your network and we just need to wait. By the end of this process, we are going to receive the file in a Hyper-V format, that is VHDX file on our computer. Um, I would like to execute the virtualization with uh, VMware Fusion, so I need to convert this file from the Hyper-V to the VMware format. For doing this I'm going to use a command line utility called QEMO and I'm gonna show you how. Meanwhile the download is still ongoing. Welcome in my terminal. Now I would like to install the QEMU utility that is uh, very useful for converting the images from one format to another. So I'm going to use the Homebrew package manager using Brew install QEMU and this will be the output. It just downloads a lot of uh, dependencies that will be installed all together in our system. I really like uh, Homebrew because it helped me keeping my system up to date and uh, all the dependency managing in all one in one place. As you can see, is uh, taking care of all uh, this file and that will be installed all together and enable my system to execute the QEMO utility from the command line. After uh, this is a successful execution, and now we can use the utility. Okay. Cool, now the file is da successfully downloaded inside my hard drive, let me use the QEMO EMG. You can obtain very easy using the Home View package manager to install the QEMO software on a Mac. This is pretty straightforward procedure, or oh, download manually. So this is the command line that we need to use for converting from uh, the Hyper-V to the VMware format is basically just saying qemu-emg convert specifying the output format of vmdk and the input file and output file. The process might require some time as you need to process all the 10 gigabyte of data and basically convert from one virtualization technology to another. This software is not showing any progress but by the end of execution we got the prompt again. We can verify the size of the obtained, obtained file, the output file, using the classical Unix du command. As you can see, the final file is uh, more or less the same size of the uh, input file, so 9 GB of data, uh, but is a slightly different format. Now we are ready finally to create a virtual machine in our VMware Fusion software. So welcome on my desktop. As you can see, I'm using VMware Fusion latest version available at the moment, and I have also other virtual machine created. 
So let me create a new one. This time I'm not using the install disk because uh, it's not uh, an ISO image. As you can see, I'm not able to use, but this is actually a real hard drive that I can use uh, creating a new virtual machine. So back on the initial process, let me create manually an operating system. Let me select a Microsoft Windows 11 64-bit ARM and okay, that's that is the default choice using UEFI firmware and I need also to define a cryptographic password for the hard drive. Let me auto-generate with a button or I can choose a, a custom one. For me it's okay, the auto-generated. And on the hard drive, we don't need to create a new hard drive because we already have one. As you can see, the VMDK, the new file, is actually available for usage whereas uh, the Hyper-V1 is not available. So let me choose uh, that uh, this file is also assigned specifically to this virtual machine so other mm, virtual machine can't uh, share. Uh, as you can see, is already the installer already predefined some settings like 2 processor and 4 GB of RAM. Let me uh, customize the path where to save the file and I can increase the number of processor for example to 4 and but the number of RAM the RAM in my opinion the memory will be okay with 4 gigabyte now full screen and uh, this will be the first start of the operating system this process is going to take a while so I speed up a little bit the video just because we basically are waiting for the operating system to boot start once the operating system is already uh, ready to boot, uh, we are going to see this screen that is actually the first initial uh, screen about the setup operation. It is asking us uh, the region, in my case United States, uh, and also the keyboard layout, in my case US, uh, and no, I don't need to a second keyboard layout, and uh, is asking to connect to a network. Okay, uh, the problem is that uh, the VMware virtual uh, network is not actually recognized by the operating system, so we need to do a little bit of hack. So we need to press uh, the Shift and F10 command. If you are on a notebook, you need to use Shift, Fn plus F10 and uh, start the command line uh, to start the command line in this way and we need to type a specific command that uh, is actually telling the installer to skip this step uh, of uh, networking so it will be obe and the slash you need to find out if you are in a different keyboard layout like me okay obe slash bypass and B and arrow. The installer will reboot again and we're gonna start from the beginning. And now the installer will be proposing us the same exact step as before, but uh, on the networking part, uh, we will be able to actually skip the networking configuration at the moment. Okay, so back again. Let's use uh, United States with a US keyboard layout. We don't need a second layout. And yes, that was exactly the same um, step as before, but we can skip the network configuration for now. Let me accept the license and let's configure our initial user. In my case, the user will be user and let me define a password. Okay, need to type a second second time just for confirmation security question we need to uh, define three different security question and let me type a password you know, just for, just because this is uh, uh, just for our testing okay here we go second security question as well as the first security question cool now uh, the setup is done and okay yes i need to confirm the privacy setting. I want to share all this information with Microsoft. That's okay for me. And yeah, finally, we got the first boot. Uh, the operating system is now finalizing all the um, final step and our computer will be finally get ready for the fun. 
all this uh, waiting time will be only from the first start as the operating system need to configure some internal components uh, and define some variable related to our hardware okay cool uh, we got this message and we actually will be able to use our desktop but as you notice probably the resolution of the display is not a perfect one because uh, um, we need to configure the display driver as well as uh, the network driver but this is windows 11 arm running on our apple hardware as you can see all the functions are pretty smooth and everything is working like a charm so this is pretty cool and i think that uh, we are one step ahead now we just need to configure uh, some little detail about our virtual machine so we need to tell windows 11 that is running in a virtual machine and we need to set up the vmware tool for this uh, specific environment this is super easy we just need uh, to actually uh, okay let's start our configuration with powershell right click uh, run as administrator and we need to allow the execution of uh, um, some type of content so let me type uh, let me set the policy for execution set execution policy to remote uh, signed in this way we allow our, all the content that uh, are remote signed to be executed on our virtual machine this is a security policy that uh, is worth to implement now uh, we are ready to install the vmware tools in our machine we just need to return back to our uh, operating system and click on reinstall uh, vmware tools you will be connected in a virtual hard drive and we can explore the content of this directory there are many files but the most important is the setup file that is basically a powershell script that we can execute using the right click of our mouse so right click run with powershell and this uh, will appear let's confirm the execution and uh, in a just a couple of uh, in a blink of an eye it will install the networking and uh, uh, display driver so now this gives uh, our virtual machine the capabilities to execute uh, without uh, any problem in our VMware infrastructure. Cool, everything seems sorted out as the driver has successfully installed and uh, the screen might blink for a while and now we are good to go. We have a fully working Windows 11 ARM 64-bit inside our Apple hardware. As you can see now we have all the capabilities and uh, we can configure the display settings inside the control panel. We can increase the resolution to the highest available for our display, in my case this one, and that will cover the all available area in my, in my laptop. Cool, now everything is sorted out and we are ready also to surf the web using the Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, we just, okay, yes, let's skip the initial setup. Yes, I don't want to continue without data and I'm good to go. Cool, let me close the welcome screen and I'm ready to surf the web. As you can see, this is the Microsoft website with all the available insight. So we are connected to the internet with a Microsoft uh, Edge on Windows 11 ARM inside a virtual machine inside my virtual VMware Fusion. I think this is a great result and this is a great environment also for testing some uh, operation in this uh, CPU architecture. Let me remind you that this version is the Microsoft Windows Insider program, so it's designed for developers and for testing the application. So it's not designed for final user and to execute like a daily workload, but this is very worth it if we need to test some integration or some uh, software in our system. And I think it's pretty worth it. Let me remind you that uh, the application that 
are able to run are the ones certified for uh, ARM processor. When we are done, we can shut down or restart our system like usual and this will be the output that is going to be displayed. As you can see, the start operation now is very fast and it takes just a, a, couple, of mi a couple of seconds and not like a minutes as before. We are going to see this login screen and now we are back to our desktop. Yay! What a wonderful day!